On the 18th of June, the NTSB released this urgent safety recommendation regarding the load LRD, the load relief device found on CFM Leap 1B engines, particularly on the 737 MAX. Today, we're going to go over in detail exactly what an LRD is, how it works, and why it's needed, and what's being done to modify the system so that air crews don't have to work with three simultaneous emergency checklists all at once when the LRD is activated. Because depending upon which engine is affected, either the cabin or the cockpit can quickly fill with smoke. This video is brought to you by folks like you that support this channel here on Patreon so that I don't have to go chasing ad revenue on YouTube because chasing algorithms is no way to report and inform. Thank you for your support. Bird strikes are rather common in aviation and if you take a large enough bird into one of these high bypass turbofan engines similar to the Leap 1B, the results can be rather catastrophic. Now this is a simulated fan blade out event on a Rolls-Royce engine, but the results can be very similar. Catastrophic destruction of the engine. Note the extreme vibration caused by the out of balance situation of the fan blades. In order to prevent this severe vibration from being transmitted to the rest of the engine, and potentially even ripping the engine completely off of the wing itself, the LRD shears the fan from the rest of the engine, isolating that extreme out of balance vibration. And it does so by using these shear bolts located right here. You see how that bolts kind of neck down like that? This will allow this to happen, the load reduction device will simply shear without any pilot intervention. It is built in by design and also uses these shear pins located right down in here. Here's a cutaway view of the engine. Here's the high bypass turbofan located right here. Here is the LRD bolts located right here. And here is the number one roller bearing, number two roller bearing, and number three, correction, ball bearing and number three ball bearing part of the forward compressor section this is the turbine section back here turbine section back here and right in this area is the a sump this a sump is full of engine oil so when the lrd is activated when these bolts shear oil is leaking out of the a sump and going into the engine Here's a little better view of this on Mentor Pilot's video on this system done a couple of months ago. There's the LRD bolts, and this orange part represents the oil inside the A sump. And this is the oil that leaks out quickly into the engine. The 737 MAX, like most 737s and most airliners, has two separate redundant air conditioning packs. Any one of these packs are enough to completely pressurize the aircraft. On the 737 and 737 MAX, the left pack primarily feeds the flight deck. The right pack, pressurized by bleed air off of the right engine, primarily feeds the cabin. These air conditioning packs are fed by compressed air from the compressor section, specifically fifth stage and ninth stage bleed air off of the compressor section and this bleed air is controlled or turned on and off by the PS PRSOV, the pressure regulating shutoff valve located right here. Here's the high bypass fan at the front of the engine. Most modern jets have an LRD system located on these high bypass turbofan engines and all of these engines also have vibration monitors and they're right there on the ICAS so that the pilots can monitor. And typically on these more modern designs, when the vibrations are out of limits because of something like a bird strike or some sort of blade out problem with the engine, extreme vibration results, and the more modern jets are programmed to automatically shut off the PRSOV valves in the event of excessive vibrations. 
thus preventing any smoke from entering the air conditioning system, stopping the problem before it begins. Unfortunately, on the 737 MAX, though the cockpit is a nice new slick glass panel display, the overhead panel on the 737 MAX, where the pneumatics are operated from, is very much a throwback to the old manual, manually operated systems of the overhead pattern panel of 737s of years gone by. Why, in my opinion, in order to comply with the same type certificate that the original 737 had. So instead of automatically turning off the PRSOV valves in the event of high, a high vibration situation, the crew needs to manually turn off the packs here and isolate the system here. So this scenario presents a very dynamic situation to the flight crews what do we got here? Do we got a bird strike? Do we got high engine vibrations? Do we got an engine fire? Do we got an engine overheat? Or now we're dealing with smoke in the cockpit. Which checklist should we run and which checklist should we run first? What is the biggest threat? So in February of 2024, an FCOM flight crew operations manual bulletin came out that added that if in the event you have an engine failure with smoke or fumes in the flight deck or cabin, run the engine fire or engine severe damage or separation quick reaction checklist. Now, by running this checklist, you're going to shut the engine down once and for all. You're not going to just retard the throttle and wait for the vibrations to settle down. You're going to go ahead and disconnect the affected auto throttle. Go ahead and retard the affected throttle to idle hit the fuel cutoff for the affected side, and then pull the fire switch. Once you pull that fire switch, then the PSROV valve will close, stopping additional smoke from entering the aircraft. Because otherwise, it's not till page three, step nine of the engine fire or severe damage or separation checklist that you get into shutting off the affected packs and isolating the air conditioning system, taking much too long to stop the smoke from entering the aircraft. Now getting this one small subtle change into the checklist procedures for the 737 pilots around the world is a real challenge. We're all iPad pilots nowadays. Long gone are the days where we received paper updates to changes in our procedures and checklists. We used to call them pink bulletins. They were very important items and we would review that pink bulletin before we posted it in our checklist. Nowadays, before we blast off to fly, we just hit a button on the iPad. All of our manuals are quickly and automatically updated. We get a green light, good to go. We're packed to go for our trip. And we may not see the changes to our checklists until the next training iteration comes about. And the NTSB recognized this after interviewing several Boeing 737 pilots and wants the FAA to do more to make sure that the pilots know what's going on with this system. So the NTSB has the following recommendations. The urgent recommendation is to the FAA to make sure that pilots understand the changes that were made to their quick reaction checklist in response to these LRD activations. Then the NTSB made separate recommendations to the FAA, EASA, Boeing, CFM International to do the software changes needed that will automatically close the PRSOV valves in the event of a LRD activation. And that's for all the series of engines, the LEAP 1A, B, and C CFM engines. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of the load reduction device on the LEAP series of engines and particularly on that of the 737 max and we'll give a special thanks to those pilots a handful of pilots worked very hard to dog the ntsb and the faa to look closer at this problem because this entire thing was nearly swept under the carpet under a technicality of not requiring an ntsb investigation because of this the Havana LRD smoke event happened back on March 5th of 2023, where a bird struck the right engine, filling the cabin up with smoke, as we saw at the beginning of the video.
In December 20th of 2023, the Southwest Flight 554 took a bird in the left engine, filling the cockpit up with smoke. And here's a picture of that fan blade damage to that aircraft. The crew did the right thing here, pulling their masks, protecting themselves, and shutting down the engine, and the smoke fairly quickly dissipated. But this was not reported to the NTSB because of the following technicality. Because among the events requiring immediate NTSB notification is failure of an internal turbine engine component that results in the escape of debris other than out the exhaust path. And since this incident involved engine oil, which caused smoke and not debris, it did not meet this notification requirement. Another criterion for reporting to the NTSB is an in-flight fire, but there was no fire involved in this event, only smoke. So because of these technicalities, the NTSB was not initially notified of this situation. So again, it was only through the hard work of a handful of pilots that continued to pursue this problem that finally got the NTSB's and the FAA's attention to this critical aviation safety issue. And I needed to wait till I had a full understanding of the facts before I could report on this here on the Blanco Lirio channel. Thank you so much for your support, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.